Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd, and welcome to the Westport Independent, a rather exciting little indie game that just came onto my radar about censorship, corruption, and newspapers, which looks in some ways spiritually related to Papers, Please. And I think it looks all rather very interesting. So let's have a look see at this, shall we? The following is an instructional film about the Public Culture Bill for all independent newspapers in Westport. Throughout this film, we'll answer various questions you may have regarding both preparations for the bill and the bill itself. What is the Public Culture Bill? The Public Culture Bill is a new bill that will come into force May 16, 1949 and has been created to improve the quality of independent media outlets. The bill contains certain guidelines for independent media outlets to follow that will make it easier to create media products of utmost quality. In order to make sure that everyone follows these guidelines, the bill will create a government-driven union called the Loyalist News and Media Association that will be mandatory for independent media outlets to join. What's your responsibility until the bill comes into force? Introducing a new bill takes time. Therefore, until the Loyalist News and Media Association is properly set up and the bill has come into force, the Loyalist government has created temporary guidelines for you to follow. Do not print deceitful content that may harm the appearance of our country. Do not print deceitful content that may harm the appearance of the Loyalist government. Do not print deceitful content that may harm the appearance of the President. And do not print deceitful content that may glorify the acts of rebels or other criminals. So there we are. I think we get a clear view of what's going on here. We've got 12 weeks until the Public Culture Bill comes into force. And until then, well, we've basically just been told we have to censor our paper for the glory of glorious wherever the hell I am, I'm not sure. Just in case, glory to our Stotska. So, dear editor, Phil has been putting up more loyalist propaganda in the office. You know I can't stand this shit, so I decided to pull it down. Should be on your desk with this note. Oh dear, Frank, you just go over there for a second and let's have a look see at that propaganda. Those are all very, very important indeed, loyalist government, but to be honest, I'd be happier if you just did some slightly better typesetting. That's pretty darn appalling. Right, let's get that back over there then. So, things we need to do. Censoring. We need to censor articles. You click on paragraphs that are inappropriate. So if we just click on that, we have now censored the article about censoring, which, oh, blimey, that, that's as ironic as rain on your wedding day. Uh, right, and what else do we have? When censored, content won't be shown to the public and will affect neither their opinion nor the government's suspicion of you. All right, fine, makes sense. And you can change the headline by clicking on it. Different headlines can change the portrayal of an article. Oh, this is all very cool. I like this. Now, once we've sent an article, we hand it over to one of our journalists to take care of. Now, the employees have different opinions and they'll be discussing how you run your paper. I've decided they don't anymore. I'm censoring that. And they have their own lives to protect, so don't blame them if they don't wish to follow you into death. Okay. So if I start saying too much that's anti the government, say, my employees are going to get very, very twitchy. Now, we'll be, I think we'll just be getting rid of that too. I like, by the way, how you put things... You don't click on things to open them, you actually have to drag them onto your desk. That's rather cool. I like that. That's very good. So, let's pull out an article and get going on this. So, the Public Culture Bill, the thing that we're actually all about here. So, the Public Culture Bill has been passed, but if I click on it, a new bill has been passed, forces independent media outlets to shut down. Well, that's not actually factually true, is it? They can operate, they're just with restrictions. So, yeah, we'll just say that the Public Culture Bill has been passed. The Public Culture Bill the government presented last year has today been passed. That is factually true, so I see no issue with that. The purpose of the bill is to stop the creation and distribution of incorrect and improper content. Again, that is factually true, so that's fine. And it will force independent media outlets to either shut down or join the new government-funded union called the Loyalist News and Media Association. Well, that all seems fine to me. So in that case, I'd say what we do is we take that article here and we move it down here into our journalists. So, what do we have? So we've got Julie, who has doubtful opinions of the government, went to a community college and worked abroad as a freelance writer. She is reasonably comfortable. Her opinion is slightly towards the rebels, but she's not particularly suspicious in the eyes of the loyalist government. Fine. And then we've got Phil. He kind of veers more towards the loyalists, so he's a loyalist supporter. Lives in the West... Oh, not a Western district. Boy, God, I hate those bastards on there. 
Western bicycles or something. Lives with disabled brother, went to a private college. Again, reasonably comfortable, not at all suspected. Is a loyalist, fine. Then we've got Frank. Now he's definitely towards the rebels. He's a bit suspicious and his well-being is again comfortable. Ah, he's near the eastern factory, it's fine. So I'm guessing the eastern side of the kind of the town or the country is more rebelly and the western is more loyalisty because it's richer, I'm guessing, is where we're going with this. And opposed the loyalists before they came to power. Interesting. Okay. And then we've got Anne, a parent, lives by... Oh, so she's a parent. So I'm guessing she's going to be, yeah, particularly worried about kind of causing trouble because she's got kids to take care of. Married, community college, comfortable, slightly loyalist, but probably therefore a little bit conservative and completely trusted by the loyalists. Fine. You know what? Let's just shove this piece over to Frank. And we've got one other thing to go through today. So the loyalist government has pursued harsher action against suspected rebels. Uh, so have they done that? Or did the loyalist government attack the privacy of civilians? So let's have a look to see what this is actually about. A new reform has passed that will hasten the arrest of rebel supporters. Uh, okay. And the reform consists of exceptions in various privacy laws allowing the police to expedite search warrants. Ah. So, okay, so you read the article to figure out what it's actually about, then decide what you're going to hack out of it, and then that makes you decide what the headline's going to be. I've got it. So most of these exceptions apply to ex-criminals with relations to the rebels. However, some exceptions also apply to civilians who have expressed disloyal opinions against the government. So the government would probably love me to scratch out that last thing. So, you know what, let's do that. Let's just scratch out that and we'll simply say that most of these exceptions apply to ex-criminal relations to the rebels. So yeah, this is pretty pro-government. So shove this over to my employees and who's the other one who's kind of fairly happy with the government? Anne is, so let's shove that over to Anne. Beautiful. So with all the articles sorted out, we can now send this straight to print. Frank says, you know, I've never been a big fan of the loyalist government, but the public culture bill is even worse than I expected. Oh, Frank, you're always a bloody moaner about this sort of thing. Phil says, don't blame it on the government. Blame it on yellow journalism and blatant lies that some newspapers post these days. There's nothing good about a misinformed public. Oh, Phil, you're such a government sympathiser. Well, yeah, sure. Do you realise how much power the government will have over the media with this? Um, total, in fact, I would imagine. I agree with Frank on this one. I can't see how the public culture bill will be beneficial for anyone but the government. Well, media outlets like ourselves have a scary amount of power over people's opinions, but on the other hand, I don't think that giving that power to the government is a great idea either. So basically, we've got this week, and then we've got 11 more weeks left, but then the bill hasn't actually come into effect yet, and what's going on here? So our popularity in the northern suburbs is pretty low, western is pretty high. Oh, I see. Okay, so these areas have opinions about the rebels... So right now the nice areas, the northern suburbs and the western districts, they're really pro-government. Whereas the eastern factory and the southern docks, the poor areas, we're more popular there and they're more pro-rebel. So, people's political opinion has just slightly swung towards the loyalists because of those things that I just published. And the loyalist suspicion of me has actually just dropped by nine points. My paper's total popularity has gone up a little bit, but it's still pretty low. And to be honest, like... The majority of the country right now is pro-government. So if I just printed all government lies, presumably I would get more popular, right? Except we've got a problem, which is in 11 weeks, this new bill comes into force. And I get the feeling that if that happens, presumably my newspaper gets shut down. I mean, I would suspect that the ending to this game, you've kind of got to... Could you actually cause the rebels to rise up? If you were really, really pro-rebel, that's really interesting. Hang on, let's have a look -see here. There's nothing more heartbreaking than a misguided public. In a world controlled by the media, the loyalist government will stop at nothing to protect the people from frivolous lies and irresponsible gossip. The public culture bill is for your own protection. I'm increasingly feeling like I ought to try and bring down the government in the next 11 weeks. This feels like a thing I really ought to do. Oh, and now it gets interesting. All of a sudden... I have a choice of, what is that, seven articles that I could publish in my newspaper and only four reporters. So in theory, I could just flipping pad my newspaper with like gossip about movie stars or things like that. 
Or I could go for the really controversial stuff, like talking about how the government has been burning books in Liberty Square, which and then kind of put a really negative spin on it. You know what? Screw it. Let's be a proper rebel paper for once. Uh, let's get into this. Though admittedly, uh, we may have to put some slightly more kind of nuanced stuff into uh, into the paper too. So government burning books, that seems like that's a very bad thing that we can really slam the government with. So let's talk. Meanwhile, man attacking police officer could make the rebels look really, really bad. A teenager was caught writing rebel messages on the wall close to Liberty Square. Police officer witnessed the act and intervened by attacking the teenager. And then a passerby pulled the officer away from the teenager. Both the man and the teenager were arrested when the officer's partner arrived on the scene. So that could be man attacks police officer or man defends teenager police officer presses charges. Okay, so we could make the rebels look bad by virtue of the fact that, you know, they're attacking police officers and stuff. Or we could completely do the opposite. Let's, let's properly slam the government for a bit. So yesterday, Liberty Square lit up as the police officers started burning books. You know what? They could just burn them somewhere more private. That, that would be a good idea. The event was the result of months of collecting books from various libraries and stores. The collected books were works supporting anti-government sentiments, and some protesters arrived at the scene but were easily held back by the police. Well, let's remove that because it makes the, um, the protests and the rebels look like they're a bit weak. Now, should we get rid of that? Or should we just say... Yeah, let's get rid of that. Because if we say, if we leave out those two sections, the story is just the police have been burning books. The police have raided libraries and stores and they've burned books. It makes them look like monsters. They're just cultural vandals. So the government burned books in Liberty Square. The government prevents the spreading of rebel propaganda. No, the government has been burning some books in Liberty Square. Screw the government. Screw them. Screw death to the government. Now, who's really, really rebelly? Uh, Frank, you're super rebelly. So you are going to be absolutely fine, aren't you? Though, admittedly... I'm hoping I'm not going to get Frank kidnapped in the night. <laughs> Possibly I am, yes. Oh, well. And, oh, we can actually properly deny articles, too, if we don't like an article. Good. Uh, now, let's have a look. See, there's been some riots in the southern docks. So, yes, a small riot in the southern docks. Mob smash windows. Police tried to intervene more quickly, overpowered by the rioters. And the riot ends after backup arrived and eight people... Oh, no. Let's not talk about the arrests or the backup. Let's just say there was an uprising in the southern docks. And the police were completely powerless to stop it. That should cause some trouble. And rioters assault police officers. Or no riots in the southern docks. Let's just report that, shall we? Let's just cause a nice bit of trouble for everyone. Now, who else is pro-rebel? Julie, get in there. You can write about the rebels. Meanwhile, also in the southern docks, there was a bombing. So a bombing in the southern docks last night. Placed inside a small liquor store. Bomb. People were injured. Two were found dead. Police have made four arrests, suspect rebel involvement. No, let's not, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about how the vicious bombings kills innocent civilians. No, 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 no. I think we'll, let, let's ignore that. Huzzah for the glorious rebels who may possibly be monsters, but are at least not going to shut me down momentarily. Fewer beggars than ever. What's this one about? A uh, number of beggars is lower than ever. And the numbers correlate with police being granted free reign over matters regarding public appearance. Witnesses have reported seeing officers harassing beggars. Oh, no. Well, okay, that this is a good article. It's like a little bit anti-government, but it's not pro-rebel. The government can't be annoyed at me for this. And policemen improve public appearances by assaulting beggars. <laughs> yes. Let's just say the beggars are down in number, and witnesses have said that officers have been harassing beggars, and they've been improving public appearances. Fine. That's good. Um, Phil, you're fairly loyalist. Uh, yeah, Phil's really loyalist. Let's just give him a puff piece. And you can have that. It's not really, it's not actively anti-government, it's just a bit negative. Then we've got, uh, what's that? An Industries Move branch headquarters to Westport. That's a nice positive thing. Or a movie star caught drunk driving claims to be tired. So, uh, Remival's Industries branch company, Dirrell Corp, has announced their intentions to move their headquarters to Westport. That's good, isn't it? And Remival claims that the move to be the starting point of an industrial giant's plan to localise in their business to the city. And the company further expresses this to create a new upswing of jobs in Westport. That seems reasonable. That can go to loyalist stooge Phil. He'll like that. And then all the other articles can just go in to the bin. There we are. So send the newspaper to print and we'll see what happens overnight. Probably something very, very bad because I've just been very mean to the government. So week two, ten weeks left until the public culture bill comes into force. And I'm guessing uh, bad things have happened. Though we've probably got... Oh yeah, we've sold quite a few copies, I think more, 
in the east and the south there. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure we sold Whaler's Papers in the west at least, so that's unfortunate. Yep, fine. And next up, people's political opinion has just swung towards Rebel. Oh yeah, the loyalist suspicion has just gone way up and the paper's total popularity has just plummeted because of the whole issue. Oh dear. Yeah, would you believe it's an easier life if you just flipping do whatever the flipping government tells you to do? Um, so I've sold less papers. The government's getting suspicious of me. This could be a prob- uh oh. I've got, I've got some really fancy looking mail. What's this really fancy looking mail? Uh, dear editor, as you're probably aware by now, we're finally able to stop the notorious Northern Herald from spreading their lies to the public. We were also forced to shut down their affiliated marketing agency. Just so happens that your paper, the Westport Independent, used the same agency. That means from now on you'll have to take care of advertising yourself, okay? Additionally, because of your affiliation with the perpetrators, we'll be keeping a close eye on you for the time being. I don't like the Loyalist Party of Westport. I feel like they're bad. Dear editors, one of your employees, Frank, has recently written quite a few questionable articles for your paper. We expect you to show your people proper discipline in order to prevent events such as these, especially since the regarded employee has a history of disloyal behaviour. You will do well to remember that reluctance in this matter will reflect poorly, not only on your employee, but you as well. I may need to be a bit more careful than I've been so far. Um, Frank is... Oh, Frank is really under suspicion at the moment. See, the problem is... What's going to happen to poor old Frank? Yeah, I may have to be careful with Frank. I think he's getting more extreme. I think, I swear his little bar's moved further over there. Which is unfortunate, right? We need to be careful. We need to be careful here. Right, a whole bunch of new articles here. Ah, uh, yes, the Northern Herald we were just told about. Uh, so what was the deal with them? So after a central publication, Popular Magazine, the Northern Herald, released its final issue. Sudden dismantlement was due to violations of the guidelines set up in preparation for the Public Culture Bill. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to me at all. And the paper's marketer, which was responsible for advertising several of Westport's other independent newspapers, was also shut down. That doesn't seem objectionable. Um, so we can leave all of that. And the Northern Herald shuts its doors, or Public Culture Bill claims its first casualty. Let's not be too controversial here. I think that's factually okay. Uh, and that means that can go over to moderate loyalist Anne. You can write that. Please, sir, I cannot bring myself to write this article. What? This is all factually true, Anne. I'm not sure what your problem is here, but all right, we'll give it to a moderate... We'll give it to a moderate rebel, Julie. Yeah, Julie's fine with that. Ah, the president. El Presidente, or possibly not. I'm not sure where the hell we are. Um, we kind of, we're kind of in that kind of same sort of grey post-war society just trying to rebuild new government world that Papers, Please lives. I'd like to think this is actually set in the same country as Papers, Please, in fact. Last month, the president visited 10 schools across the country. Fine. Visits were centred around private schools funded by government officials. Uh, maybe we should just remove that. And during his day, the president spoke both about his career as well as a future in politics. Seems factually accurate. President visits schools or president visits private school while ignoring public schools. <laughs> Yay. Okay. That should be fine to go over to Anne. Anne, you can write that, right? Yeah, present visit schools, they're fine with that. So we're writing some positive stuff about the government there. That's fine. And Rebels Assault Paperboy and Burn New Shipment. I feel like I shouldn't necessarily be on the Rebels side. And they are, they are doing some bad stuff. This morning the paper delivery from the Eastern Journal was interrupted by a group of masked figures. Paperboy tried to intervene, was overpowered and assaulted. The truck was left vandalised and sprayed with words including class traitors and loyalist dogs. Yeah, the rebels are also not obeying uh, the freedom of the press in the slightest either. Um, oh dear, so the rebels assault paperboy or people fight back against censorship and lies depending on how we want to. Let's leave that article for now. Let's just um, completely leave that article for now. So what else do we have? Police shut down a prostitution ring. How's, where's the political spin in that? So police shut down a local brothel, Eastern District Warehouse. According to statement, the police have long suspected the location. All patrons have been arrested. Witnesses claim to have heard one of the women pleading that they had already paid for protection. Ah. So, uh, potentially, the police were slightly corrupt there. So police shut down prostitution ring or police shut down brothel for not paying bribes. Let's do that. Because that's not anti-government. That's anti... It's anti-establishment a little bit. Frank, are you going to be... Okay, Phil's not going to write that. Frank... Frank, you can write that, and hopefully you'll be fine in the morning. And then we've got to find a nice little puff piece for bloody Phil to write, because Phil won't write anything bad about the government. 
Uh, new youth group founded to educate the nation's children. That seems fair. Yeah, but let's have a look and see what's going on with the um, with the Remival Industries, who moved to town recently. So they've had quite a bad year. Claim the company has lost roughly 38 million L's. God damn it. That, that's a lot of L's. You could buy a lot of L nurses with that money, making it uh, Remival's third financial year in a row with negative earnings. So company claims it will not affect their latest venture into localising their business to Westport. Okay. So we've got, let's just get rid of that. So like, I love how the story's told through articles that may or may not even be published. That's quite cool. So recent information from an anonymous source implicates several of Westport's major businesses of affiliating with the Vile Rags. The city's most infamous criminal gang, the Vile Rags, are suspected of involvement with over 100 crimes last year alone among suspected companies is, oh, Remival. So we could potentially like bring down Remival if we wanted to. Because Remival are already clearly in trouble. So, multiple industrial giants suspected of having connections to a violent gang, or the Vile Rags underground puppet masters of Westport's industry. So, we could bring down the bloody country like that. Ooh. But I get the feeling that Phil, Phil's not going to want to write that, unfortunately. So, and a new... Oh, here's something. The new bloody youth group to educate children. Phil's going to love that. So, it's either doing that, or it's a loyalist attempt to indoctrinate nation's youth. No, Phil won't write that article. So yesterday the government announced the formation of a new youth group titled The Loyalist Youth. And the goal is to offer fun and education activities for intercity children such as hiking and camping. Children will also be taught loyalist values and earn ranks based on their knowledge and behaviour. That is true. There's nothing factually incorrect there. Phil, are you willing to write this? Yep, Phil's willing to write the actual true article. And now we've got layout. So that's nice. Oh, cool. Now we get to choose, like, what the... What's kind of most prominent? That's really cool. Or marketing. Uh, there are still articles. Oh no, sorry, we have we have to lay out the thing first. So we need to pick articles from here and drag them to an empty place in the paper. So what's the biggest story? President visits schools, police shut down for not paying bribes. Uh, Northern Herald shuts its doors. Let's talk about another paper. Let's talk about the scandal. Let's talk about this big old scandal, yeah. And then uh, next page. Yeah. So now inside let's have a nice little puff piece about the president visiting some schools yep he did indeed visit some schools and the third page can be uh, the northern herald and then finally we've got the fourth page there we go so this is like mainly about crime and society and there's a little bit of industrial and celebrity news in there all right there we are. Westport independent police shut down brothel for not paying but this is not going to go down well with the government is it <laughs> Oh dear. Now, I can now put a bit of marketing in here. So, drag the slider to change the marketing focus between the different districts. We basically just have a given amount of marketing that we do. I can't control the amount of marketing, it's just I decide where it goes. So, we've got the northern suburbs, so upper class district of Westport, very few inhabitants, but those who do live there have more money than the rest of the people of the Westport could ever dream of. Fine. 75,000 people. 150,000 people in the western districts, cafes, restaurants, bureaucratic agencies. Yeah, okay, so they're all about the crime and the celebrity. These guys are about celebrity and industrial. Meanwhile, over in the eastern sector, which is very populous, heavy industries, steel mills, and down here, 300,000. You see, just by marketing more, down here in the docks, the slums, and the industrial parts, I could do... Like, there's a lot of people. I could get a lot of sales here. I would say we want to, like, do 40% here, 40% here and then ooh, oh that changes the that changes the thing that's really cool the westport independent it changes what we do the workers magazine the uh yeah uh, gritty news for the gritty sailor oh that's really cool the workers magazine i like the workers magazine that's quite good and then if we just kind of do this slightly yeah that doesn't make any difference yeah let's be the workers magazine let's do that shall we published magazine and let's see who gets arrested in the night and never heard from again all right week three now what's a nine weeks left until the new bill comes into effect what have we got coming in now so papers sold oh oh my goodness we've sold so many papers We've sold so many papers. Look at the papers we've sold. Um, unfortunately, I suspect the government's not going to be thrilled about the fact that we've sold quite a few papers because we've sold loads of papers in the East and the South and the opinions, especially in the South, are swaying in favour of the rebels. Um, oh yeah. Papers' total popularity has jumped like crazy. 
the people's political opinion has jumped slightly in favour of the rebels. And, oh, the loyalist suspicion of me dropped because I put those puff pieces in. Aha. Aha, ha, 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 ha. Now we can sell loads of papers and slowly make people swing towards the rebels. Okay, good. This has gone very well. That was a good day. And has anyone sent me up? No, and the government hasn't even written me to kind of quietly, tacitly threaten me. Lovely. Now what have we got here? President speaks... I read that as President speaks at vegetarian gathering there. No, the President speaks to veteran gathering. This sounds like a good puff piece for bloody Phil to do. So the President speaks at a veteran gathering, which is also... <laughs> President shows unparalleled compassion in speech to veterans. Perfect. That's a, that's, that's a bit too much. That's a bit too much. So we gave a speech to the military veterans of Westport's annual conference. Stand before you today. I wish to thank you for your service. At the end of the speech, the president also spoke of lost comrades. Do not cry for your comrades, for their sacrifices saved our beautiful country. Okay, so I'm guessing the president was a military man himself, and there was a war that led to this. So you know what? That all seems perfectly fine and factual. So this is going over to that bloody loyalist Phil. He'll be fine to write that. Lovely. 28 people have been arrested for protesting. That sounds like a good controversial thing for me to uh, throw over to Frank. Frank the rebel. Uh, so 20 people arrested for a protest near a park. Rally was against the public culture bill which came into force later this year. That is factually true. And the situation took a violent turn as the protest resisted arrest by arriving officers. The protest ceased after no. Let's not mention that back up. No mention that backup if you be so kind. 28 people arrested for protesting. Police stop rebel rise process. No, 28 people arrested for protesting. Frank, this one's yours. Julie will be able to write a kind of moderate article that's a bit negative, but not too bad, I'd say. Uh, factory explosion shakes the Eastern District. Oh no, what happened in the East? Who caused it? Tragedy struck as a local factory exploded. Several went injured. Casualties were already numbered in the hundreds. And the revival management claims this was due to an accident involving chemical compounds. Police believe otherwise with suspicions of rebel involvement. No, no, no. The, oh, the, the rebels are possibly terrorists. No one's a good guy. I like it in games when no one's a bloody good guy. New loyalty reviews for government employees. That sounds problematic. So determine allegiance among government employees. Uh, new policy of loyalty reviews. Representatives are sure they will handle these delicately. Own to in rare cases. These will be mandatory for all employees who are not members of the Loyalist Party. Same goes for employees with immigrant backgrounds. Oh dear. Either we can just say there are these loyalty reviews or new government policies to weed out dissenters in the public sector. That's a bit harsh. Let's just leave it as is. Though let's just... Let's just remove the mention that they're going to be delicate. Uh, they'll be mandatory, but let's also remove the, the racist undertone, just make it a little less controversial. Now, uh, Julie, are you willing to write this? Julie's willing to write that. Now we need a bit of a nice, fluffy thing for uh, Anne to write, because Anne is a bit of a delicate one. She doesn't write anything too controversial. So, students protest against police brutality, and former rebel speaks out to the press. Ooh, former rebel speaks out to the press. No, that's... What's he got to say about the rebels? I want to read this for myself, even though I'm not going to put it in the paper. So he claimed to be a former member of the rebel cell, admitted to a number of illegal activities, including recent attacks on police officers, claimed to have parted ways with his group as a result of his guilt. It's getting worse. He says, just quietly put that up in the bin there. I thought bringing down the government was a moral thing to do, but it doesn't seem like it is. Um, okay, so, oh, Remival outsourcing to underdeveloped countries. Screw you, Remival taking jobs away from hard-working Westport something something. So it's outsourced almost all of its production overseas. Meanwhile, several factories in Westport have been shut down, leaving hundreds of people unemployed. This has allowed unemployment in areas like the Eastern factories to double over the last three years. Well, it's a controversial story, but it's not directly linked to the rebels or the government, so that's fine. So outsourcing or Remival abandons Westport to unemployment, outsources to underdeveloped countries. Yep, that seems reasonable. Uh, yeah, this all seems reasonable. Um, now, actually, this might be too controversial for Anne. No, she's willing to write it. Beautiful. Right, let's lay this out. Now, what's our big lead story today? Because whichever one you lead with, presumably, gets, like, loads of... So that's a big industrial thing. Whereas if I do, say, this one, it's a... Oh, uh, yeah, so that's more of a celebrity type thing, I see. Whereas if I put this here, and then the next page over, then that... Does it make a difference? I'm not sure if it does. Um, so let's just pull this back for a second. Pull that off. What is going to be my lead story today? Uh, Remival abandoning Westport, people arrested for protesting, the veteran gathering, or the loyalty reviews for government employees. 
Let's go for the slightly less controversial Remival thing, because I don't think that's going to be that controversial, really. And then we'll put in the protesting. Yep, then we'll put the President Fluff piece in. And then we'll put in the loyalty thing. There we are, Industrial Crime and Society, fine. Marketing, I think we'll do pretty much what we did last time. Uh, yeah, because the areas that we're interested in are interested in what we're doing right now. So, let this time... Let's have the... Oh, what's that one? Societal news. Every morning, every day. Is that a... Is that our country or is that a brain? Or is that our country as a brain? I don't know. Put a bit more into... Here, no, I don't... Let's not be the workers' magazine today. Let's be societal news. Societal... Or we, or we could be a gritty news for gritty sailors. <laughs> now, let's just be that today. Let's just be that. Can we keep being the societal news if we're at third time? Yeah, that's fine. Let's just do that, and we'll try and get a little bit more sales in the Western Districts. I don't think we need to bother about the Northern Suburbs. There's only 75,000 people there, and they're never going to care about what we do. Publish the paper, and await the horrendous consequences of our actions. And that president's a real fine man, Phil. Phil, you're such a bloody stooge. You being a sarcastic right now, says Frank. I think Phil and Frank are going to end up punching each other by the end of this. Week four, what have I just done? Because I suspect things may, that may have been a little bit OTT. Sold papers, loads of sold papers. And the opinions down in the south is swinging towards the rebels, which is lovely. I'd love to think actually the swings of opinion towards the rebels are actually what's causing news to be generated. That'd be cool. Uh, so we've got papers total popularity fell a little bit. Suspicion of me fell a little bit because I did put a puff piece in and we the main story was about revival, not about the government. So that's good. And opinion is slowly swinging towards the rebels. But we might want to do a little bit more. Yeah, let's get let's get some more rebel news today. Uh oh, we've got mail. What mail have we got? And join the president's birthday celebration. Oh no. No, no, no. That can be Oh, we can't bin that. And dear loyalist lapdog, your petty kissing of the president's backside last week will not be taken lightly. Get your tongue back in your mouth or it will be promptly removed. Don't fuck with us, it will be the last thing you do. For your friendly rebel neighbour. <laughs> Damn you, Spider-Man. Will anyone save us from this wall crawling menace? I wish I could just publish stories about Spider-Man just to fill up my paper. Okay, the rebels are now angry at me, so I can't just be pro-rebel because the government will kill me. And if I'm pro-government, the rebels will kill me. So I've got to strike a balance. You know what? Let's be the rebel paper this week. Police prevent attempted bombing. No, that sounds that's probably the rebels doing the bloody bombing. That's not a good idea. Um, okay, a construction company, illegal migrants, bombed. There's a lot of bombs in the news this week. Blimey. Uh, movie star writes biography, calls it my lonely place in greatness. I hate that. I. You know what? Censored, 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 censored. Unfortunately, yes, it kind of feels like a lot of things in the paper are not pro-rebel. So, okay, let's see what we can do here. Construction company, hiring illegal migrants, president, president protects Westport citizens. Can we turn that against him, by any chance? Last night's press conference, the president discussed the safety of Westport's inhabitants. During the conference, he discussed how rebel activities cause harm to the public. The northern suburbs have been hit worst. Oh, for goodness sake. And to ensure safety, government-funded guards will be placed by the district's border. Can we, can we just change the skew of that? President isolates the North while leaving everyone else to fend for themselves. It's not really that pro-rebel, is it? Um, no, it's not really that pro-rebel at all. Let's just get rid of this, however. Let's just make sure it's not too positive. Is Anne going to be willing to write that? Anne, you're gonna, yeah, Anne's going to write that, fine. So, bomb disrupts rally. Can we potentially blame the government for this? Tragedy struck yesterday as a bombing occurred during a political rally in the West. Casualties are still unconfirmed, but several people were injured. Response, the police have brought in several local political groups for questioning. Despite claims of having alibis, all of the arrestees remain in custody. Okay. And police leads witch hunt after bombing. Perfect. That's taken a nice anti-rebel story and made it anti-government. That's perfect. Frank is really unsuspicious at the moment. Phil, are you willing to write this? No, Frank is not willing to write this. Julie, will you write that by any chance? Julie, you gonna write that? No, he's not gonna write that either. And I don't want to give that to, I don't want to give that to Frank because Frank's a little bit suspicious at the moment. But Frank won't write anything too positive. Okay, give in for the minute. Hang on, we need to figure out the right thing to do here. Local factory hiring scabs. 
So the local shell factory announced today its intention of bringing women into the workforce. Uh, women describe this as both with times and cost effective, and it's shortly after a massive strike against the company's dangerous working environment, or with someone right for the job, the owner said to the press. And that's either hiring scabs or highest women workers. Hiring scabs, hiring scabs, hiring scabs. Um, Phil, you can write that because you won't write... What? Phil, why won't you write that? How about Frank? Is that a, That's a safe thing for Frank to write, fine, because it's not anti-government at all. Frank just writes anything. Frank just doesn't give a shit. And hiring illegal migrants, okay. That's fine. Construction company Westport contractors accusations of hiring illegal migrants. Uh, leveled by various clients of the company who complained about sloppy workmanship and language issues. And the company is to be audited by government officials to examine the claims. Let's just get rid of that. Let's not make the government look too good here. Uh, various clients of the company who complained about sloppy workmanship. So illegal immigrants or contractors a safe haven for foreign criminals. Yay. Phil, you going to write that? Yeah, Phil's willing to write that. Now we just need to find something a bit fluffy for... Yeah, something a bit fluffy for Julie to write. So, a bomber was prevented from arming a large supply of explosives outside the government office. Local rebel group are believed to be behind the incident. No, let's just quietly bin that article about the bombings. Fine, we'll put a bloody puff piece about the bloody movie star in. So, the movie star, um, Harold Finn, today announced his upcoming autobiography. My lowly place in greatness, it will be chronicling Finn's journey towards stardom. Always wanted to share my life story with my fans. To see that moment finally arrive means a lot to me. And scheduled for release next fall. No, we're not giving it a bloody plug. We're just going to talk about it. We will give that to Julie. There we are. Julie's happy with that. Let's go. So we're going to say that the president isolating the north is... Oh, let's not attack the president on the front page. It's a little bit controversial. Um, Phil, your article goes on the front page about how there's bloody foreign criminals, something, something. The president's going on page two. And then we're going to have local factory hiring the scabs. And then finally just the puff piece, just because we had to give something to Anne. You know what, we'll sell a ton of papers in the East, because we're like right focused on the industrial and the site, which is what the East cares about. So let's just put bloody almost all our budget. Actually, no, let's put 60% of the budget into the East, and we'll put the rest into the South. Because we do want to keep the South ticking along here. Let's publish that paper. Week 5. Let's see what happened uh, to this paper that we published at the weekend. How did it go? Uh, sold papers. Oh, we sold so many papers in the East. So many. Oh my goodness, look. Look at the rebel opinion down in the South. And the rebels are swinging over in the East as well. At this point, well over half the city is pro-rebels. Because, yeah, like these areas, the East and the South, are way more populous. Although I'm going to guess we've got a bit of a... Yeah, popularity's gone up. The loyalist suspicion of me's gone up. The people's political opinion has swung way towards rebels. Though I'm not sure how it's not over half already. Because, yeah, there's... Maybe, like, the people in the North and the West have more money, so they're more influential or something. Um, uh-oh. I've got mail and I'm really worried about. Is Frank there? No, Frank! Frank, no! No, Frank! Dear Register, because of your impotence and reluctance when taking care of your team, we've been forced to take your employee, Frank, into custody. We strongly recommend you rethink your position in this matter. If you can't handle your workers, we will be forced to act in ways that will guarantee won't be favourable to you and your paper. Oh, Frank. Frank's been sent to the re-education camp. I should have just made him write a puff piece. And now I can only put three articles in my paper. Oh, that's a shame. And these people who are left are going to flipping refuse to write flipping negative stuff for me, aren't they? Darn it, now it's going to be really hard to support the flipping rebels. Price of root vegetables expected to rise this year. Yeah, I bet Phil will be willing to write about bloody that. But maybe I'll just blame that on the government somehow. Ah, loyalist government's new strategies to improve education at public colleges. This we can probably turn against them. So news regulations to improve the quality of the colleges will increase the college's funds, allowing them to improve both the environment and the education. The government will also greatly increase the cost of tuition for our Westport. Yeah, that's good. There we are. Let's just get rid of that about how it's improving anything and just talk about... Actually, just, just screw it. Get rid of everything. And loyalist government capitalises on colleges while shutting the working class out of a proper education. <laughs> yes. Julie, get on it. There we are. She's even willing to write that. Beautiful. Putting that right on the bloody front page. Screw you, government. You sent one of my people to an education camp. Um, vandalism in the northern suburbs. Oh, what's going on up there? Broken windows, paint smeared on the walls. And the paint spelled out phrases such as down with government, freedom to the people. And the police have already apprehended seven suspects. 
vandalism or rebel propaganda and vandalism. Mm, let's just quietly get rid of the mentions of the rebels. Let's just make it seem like it's just a wide public thing. Now, Anne. Anne's never going to write this. No, Anne's not going to write. Phil's not going to write it either, is he? Phil's never going to write this. Phil? Uh, can we for Let's just force Phil to write something for once. Ah, uh, no, let's not. Let we might I might force them to write something next week. This week, let's be nice. They're all getting over the fact that Frank's bloody gone missing. Uh, Welster and Son, bankruptcy. So a small furniture maker has officially closed down, steadily losing money, and 200 people have lost their jobs. What's the negative spin on that? Large number of unemployed citizens just got larger. Well, I guess that's like that's negative, isn't it? Which is nice. Uh, before finally shutting the factory yesterday. Yeah, let's just put a negative story out there. And you're fine with that, aren't you? Because it's uncontroversial. But it makes the government look bad because it looks like the economy's tanking, which reflects badly on the government. The President's birthday was celebrated all over Westport, parades in Liberty Square and northern suburbs, at the same time protesters and rebel sympathisers marched by the southern docks, and riots were broken up by police. Let's get rid of that. The President's birthday was celebrated, protests on the President's birthday. Phil, write this article. Yes! Phil's willing to write it! For some reason he is! Beautiful. Right, proceed to the layout. Protests on the President's birthday. Screw you, Mr. President. And huge number of jobs are being lost. And the loyalist government has shut the working class out of education. <laughs> Yay! We should also hire someone new, by the way. We should totally hire someone new. Um, screw it. Let's put all. Let's just put the marketing spend into here and to actually just forty percent here. We are now gritty news for a gritty sailor. Publish that paper. Let's get the South uprising. Yes. So I went on this date yesterday, says Phil. By any chance did the person you're on the date with say something against the government so you report them to the secret police immediately? Alright, week six. We were pretty bloody mean to the government uh, last time. We've sold... Oh, we've sold... Yeah, we're basically dominating. We're dominating the press down in the, uh, the south. The east is really coming along as well. So, And they're really now pro-rebel and anti-government. Though we're not really doing much over here in the west. Oh, I'll tell you what we could do. We could start working on the West. You know how we work on the West? We just need to do the things that the West likes. That's what we need to do, isn't it? We just need to folk we just need to have a couple of stories that the West likes. So uh parties yeah, papers popularity has gone up, suspicion of me's risen, and political opinion is slowly swaying towards the rebels. Oh, I've got mail from the party. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hello! One of your employees, Judy. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Her naive mind must be taught the position she's in. If not, her punishment will fall on both your heads. Did you get just get rid of Julie? Oh, Julie's not. Okay. We've got to be really careful of Julie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call it apart there as we are about halfway through this game. But as it seems to be a fairly short game, one of those games where you like kind of play it through quite quickly, but then you replay it over and over to get different endings is what I'm guessing. I am therefore going to pick this up and finish off this first playthrough tomorrow. I quite like doing all the censoring and the changing of the headlines and trying to balance the government and the rebels and so forth. That's really rather good. So yes, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit more Westport Independent very, very soon indeed. And in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the really rather excellent Westport Independent. Thank you very much and goodbye. What the hell? All right, we've now got a Scottish zombie traveling with us. Oh, he's actually quite good now. And he's got over his drinking problem, which is, oh, he eats human flesh. He's got some decent carrying capacity. Okay, fine, he eats people, but come on, let's not be flipping judgmental about this.